Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing really well today. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to play five exercises that are going to really improve your accuracy and your speed on bass. Two technical aspects that are really important to focus on. Now, the backing track you heard me play along to there, you can download that for free, as well as a PDF of all the shapes and the five exercises that I'm going to teach you. Let's dive straight into the first one. I'll explain a few things as we go, but this first one is built entirely around an A minor blues scale, which is this. So called because it sounds bluesy, that flat five turns a basic A minor pentatonic scale into a blues scale. Here it is quite slowly. So it's pentatonic with the addition of that note there, which is the flat five, gives it that sort of slightly bluesy feel. And what I'm doing here really is just sequencing the scale just to make it sound a bit more like a, a solo, which you can do in your solos and in your practice to, to build speed and accuracy and stamina and strength and all those aspects that you need to, to express yourself freely. So one more time, I'll do that one. In this instance, I'm using one finger per fret, putting my first finger on the A and then lining the other fingers up one finger per fret. I've got sort of like a V shape between the fingers. If you struggle with that, if you've got hand injuries or, or what have you, then just adapt it to the way you can do it. But just day by day, try to get those stretches better. Try to keep this wrist quite straight. I've got the base angled upwards so that I have access to the fretboard. In terms of plucking, I'm alternate plucking most of the way, to be honest, and just working on that. It's the coordination between the fingers that needs to be really on point to, to build this. If I just do this. Just a random thing over an A minor pentatonic one octave. What you'll notice if I slow down is that whether I'm plucking and I'm going index, middle, index, middle, all the way, whether I'm plucking or, or fretting, there's a finger that is right where it needs to be before the next note is plucked. Sounds a bit confusing, but let me just do that really slowly. There's always a finger one step in the future, if you like. And that's the only way that you're gonna be able to get fast on the bass, is to work on your technique in that way. Let's move on to the second example now. Now this is an A half whole diminished scale. So here we go. Now the nature of this scale is that you always have to do a little bit of a shift and here we have four notes per string in that in this in the third and fourth bar example. But let me just very slowly go from the first bar. Brilliant for dexterity because you're using all four fingers in this instance. I'm going one, two, four, two. This is if you line your first finger up at fret four of the G string and have your fingers line up one finger per fret, which is what that is. If I shout out finger numbers, it's one, two, four, two. One, one, two, four, two, one. And then four, three, one. Keeping the fingers nice and curled. Fretting right by the fret. That's the whole accuracy thing. I don't want that sound. And then you do more or less the same thing, but you have to shift up quickly here without any gaps. And it's the same patterns all the way. And then bars three and four, I love this pattern. 
I'm starting from an A flat fret four of the E string and I'm using my first finger twice here. So I'm going A flat A and shifting the first finger. Then you can do three, four on frets seven and eight. So that starts at fret four of the E string. You now go to fret five of the A string with exactly the same pattern. Now fret six of the D string, same pattern. Seven of the G string, same pattern. That's why these are symmetrical, these scales, they have the same pattern. And you can get some really interesting, beautiful sounding runs doing this. Right, next one, let's move on. This is a C major seven arpeggio with a couple of articulations, hammer-ons and pull-offs in this case. I'll play it. Notice that the first time I did it, I'm, I'm slowing down. I'm also not using the backing track. Whenever you're doing something like this, just slow it right, right, right down, even if it's just much slower than I'm playing it. I tend to some sometimes rush through because this is a, a lesson that we need to keep, you know, at a decent enough length, okay? But just really slow it down. So we're starting on the major seventh, the B. This is the seventh fret of the E string and I'm doing a hammer on straight up. Really hammering down from not a great distance, but right next to the fret, the C there. And that pattern is exactly the same. Just shift it up. So it's this, it's this thing about having a finger there already. Okay, so I've got finger one, two, and then one, four, slowly. I'm doing one pluck with the index, and then middle index. Now watch this here. Watch my little finger when it gets to the G, the 10th fret of the A string. Keep your eye on that finger. As I play the note, I'm twisting round, pivoting round a bit to get the first finger ready. It's got to be there, split second before. In fact, when the first finger has finished its job of playing this note here, the seventh fret of the A string, it's already on its way. It has to be. Same with this, okay? It's that economy of motion. That's how you build that. That's how you build speed and accuracy. Slowing down, laser focus, magnifying glass to your own technique, okay? You've got to be responsible for that. Look at this hand, look at this hand. And it's a bit boring, but you've got to just build it up like that. On the way back down, pluck, pluck. And then a pull off this time, but you can equally just pull off the first two notes, if you like. You know, I, I do things like this. I'll play it really, really slow and then just go hyper fast. Then I'd probably introduce a metronome or a drum beat. Let's hear what that sounds like with the backing track in. Just at the end there, I couldn't resist just breaking into some minor pentatonic. The second shape. Also, I've been on an obsessive one week listen to Jimmy Haslip. I don't know if you know him. Ex bass player of the Yellow Jackets, founding member of the Yellow Jackets. Just a brilliant, brilliant bass player who focuses a lot on the minor pentatonic scale, blues scale, and that diminished scale. So that's really, I, I, I want to play like him when I grow up, really. I'm going to put a link to a solo of his so you can have a listen to that. But it's just an idea of how you can use this, not only in exercises, but in actual musical playing in solos as well. Right, let's move on. Now we're doing a three note per string Dorian run. So the key of this backing track that I wrote is, well, I mean, a key, you can't really have a Dorian key. It's the key of G major, focusing on the second mode of G major, which is a Dorian. So the flavor is very much that. G major has an F sharp in it and that's it. So Dorian means you start on the second degree of the major scale. So G, A, start on A, play all the notes of the key G major. So A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A. Play that with the track. 
has a very jazzy flavor in this context it's also very rocky very folky and it's used a lot in funk as well anyway i'm going to play the exercise that i've written like i said before you make this your own grab some of those scale shapes take three notes take two strings whatever you like okay but this is what i've come up with here Now, when I'm filming these videos, I'm not always in the most comfortable position. And certainly here, I'm noticing when I go down to the E string, you've got to shift your hand a little bit to get there, okay? So sometimes I'll have my thumb at the back of the neck and just sort of pivot a little bit more to get those curled fingers round. I need to angle the bass slightly differently to access higher up the neck and the E string direction. So you do have to alter things as you go when you play, that's no problem. Okay, finally we have an idea where we take an A minor pentatonic scale and run it just across one string. For dexterity, this is really good because you're forced into hand shifts. Let me play it slowly. Okay, again, learn the scale. We go A, then C, D, E. All the dots, all the fret markers there. And then the next one is not the fret marker. I use fret markers all the time. So something like this. It's like, okay, those three dots, and the next note is past that dot. And you just learn that way. Then we're going to the double dot, that's the octave. This is very jazz fusion, but you could easily turn this into a rock thing. If you have speed and dexterity and you know the scale and you've got a decent sense of rhythm, that's where stuff happens quickly and immediately. And that's good for jamming, improvising and so on. So just make something up. I'm using two notes at a time. So there I've got fingers one and three. You know, anything that's a notes that are two frets apart. I'm, in this case, I'm tending to use fingers one and three. And there would be fingers one and four because there's a four fret gap. So that's it, there you have it. You've got those five exercises there. There's a lot to download here. You've got the full PDF of those five exercises. You've got the shapes involved and you've got the backing trackers all for free. I just ask maybe if you did get something from this lesson and you enjoyed it, you know, got some value from it, maybe you would consider subscribing to my channel. That really helps me keep these free lessons going. I've got books and courses that you can go deeper, paid stuff on my site and uh, maybe I'll say it. you can donate to support my work if you like. That's all linked below. But thanks very much for watching the video today. If you've got any questions as ever, please leave a comment below. Have a brilliant day and I'll hopefully see you next time.